Okay, in this video, I'm going to show how we could use Studio 5000, which is the software for the Control Logics controller, with the Logics Echo emulator. So what we're going to do first is we're going to create a an emulated chassis or CPU using the Logics Echo um, software. So we're going to open up Logics Echo, and I happen to have it here in my uh, pinned to my my start menu and it will look like this when you first open it it will say factory talk logics echo dashboard now first time in there should be no controllers so we need to add a controller or a device first so we have our devices menu showing right here if it is not showing then you can click over here in this right hand um, menu bar and um, look for the uh, the left panes for devices actually right here um, the kind of the compass symbol will pull up our device menu we're going to uh, hit the three bars and we're going to say add a controller and this will be default there's only one option here and we're going to give it a name and you can call this whatever you want I'm just going to call it, um, I'm going to call it, uh, wait, CPU. Also, we'll keep this uh, revision at 33.11, and your IP address should probably be the 127.0.0.1. Um, if it shows this 192, that's probably the NIC card or the IP address of your laptop itself, um, but I do believe uh, keep it at 127.0.0.1 and if you want to type in a description that's fine and slot this will basically be what slot in this virtual chassis do we want to put the CPU in I would recommend keeping it in slot 0 but you can pick anywhere from 0 to slot 16 because you can actually have multiple emulated CPUs in this Logix Echo chassis We'll keep it on slot zero and we'll say add. So now this um, bracket zero zero indicates that it is in slot zero and that's the name of my CPU, L8 CPU. At this point, you want to verify just a couple things. We want to double click on the device itself and that'll pull up the uh, kind of the general properties here. And we want to make sure that this controller instance is on. And we can also click on the little plug symbols over here in the right hand menu, which is device status. And we want to make sure that this, this slider bar is, um, is over to the right, which indicates that it is on as well. And that's it. We just kind of leave this running in the background. Then we'll go back to Studio 5000 and we will create a new project. I'm going to go file and I'm going to say new. And we have logics, right? We have, I have a couple options here. These ones may not all be shown on your instance that you have installed. You probably will not show factor talk view because you don't have that software installed on your computer, but you should have logics and view installed um, yeah, currently. View would be for uh, touch screens and logics would be of course the control logics controllers. Now there are several options here. Compact, Compact Guard, Control Logics 5570, and Control Logics 5580. Being that we're going to use the Logics Echo emulator, we have to make sure that we choose the 5580 as our type of controller for all of our lab projects. Now you have options. You have several options of the 5580 processor. There's a L81, L82, L83, four and five. The only difference between these are the amount of memory that each processor has. So uh, it doesn't really matter, but I would go ahead and just pick the L81E. The E stands for Ethernet. The NSC stands for no storage, uh, no stored energy device. The EP stands for process controller. So we don't need to worry about these two, the NSC or the EP. We'll just stick with the base L81E processor for our exercises. And we'll give this project a name. 
So we can call this, um, I'll call it ELET 287 test. And the location will be the path for the file store. Right now I'm going to my desktop just so that I can quickly find the file later if I needed to, uh, but it'll go to some default location, which is perfectly fine to keep it as is. Or you can browse and put it into your own location that, that you prefer to store the file in. We'll say next. The next option here is basically the revision. We want to keep this at version 33. The chassis size, uh, A7 is default, and that's fine. We can keep that uh, as well. You have options for the various chassis sizes that are available. There's a four slot, seven, 10, 13, and a 17 slot. So uh, A7 is fine for the seven slot. We'll keep the CPU in slot zero because that matches um, kind of what we had in the Logix Echo chassis. And uh, no, no, no protection is, is good. You do have options to, in, to enable security. I would highly suggest you do not do that. Um, you could potentially lock yourself out from getting into this project uh, afterwards. And we'll say finish. Once we say finish, it will build the, uh, basically it'll build the, the project, build the structure for the control objects chassis. This could take a few moments to do. Okay, so uh, the, the build is finished. Uh, we have our kind of our controller organizer here on the left-hand side. We have our, our overall kind of controller project up top. We have our name, ELET 287 test. We have our controller tags. Uh, we have our tasks, which will be our, our where we put our logic underneath the main program. Uh, we have some other options here that we probably will not use at all, like such as motion groups, alarm manager, and assets. And then the last piece of this is the IO configuration. So we can build, um, we, we can build, uh, you know, IO cards in our chassis. Right now it only shows the um, slot zero, which is our CPU in our configuration. If I wanna add some additional cards, I have right click here on the back plane and say new module and I can add modules. This would be important if we were in the lab because we would, we would want to use in, you know, the, the IO cards that are in the chassis, we would need to kind of configure them uh, and, sh and show what they are as part of this configuration. Uh, for our virtual, we're not going to uh, worry about that, at least not at the moment. And then at this point, since we have our emulator working and we now have a project created, we can just verify and test our communications to the emulator. To do that, we'll go to communications and we'll say who active. You should see who active, vector talk links, and you'll get um, this kind of tree showing up in this window. So we have a few options here. We have the Allen Braille Ethernet, the Allen Braille Ethernet IP, and then we have an emulate Ethernet, and then just an Ethernet in a USB. We are going to use the emulate Ethernet. So I'm going to expand by clicking on the triangle. And yours may take a moment to browse, but uh, mine found it pretty quick. I have my 127.0.0.1, 9310 WED 300 ENT emulate 5580 controller. This uh, this string of characters here is basically the the uh, catalog number for the Logix Echo emulator itself. So that's just telling me that it's the Logix Echo emulator. But then it also further says it's an emulate 5580 controller. Now, if I were to actually expand this, I don't have to do that. I could just click right here. And when I do that, you'll see that my go online uh, is no longer grayed out. When I had, when I was here, that is grayed out. But when I clicked on the emulate 5580 controller, the going line is no longer grayed out. 
But what I would like to show you is that if I were to expand this, you'll see I now have a couple options. I have backplane in the PC via USB. If I were to expand on backplane, it actually shows me um, that in slot zero, 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 is my 9310 WED 300 ENT. So it's actually showing me that's in slot zero. So again, like I had mentioned earlier, there could be multiple controllers. You could you could actually uh, create multiple controllers in that emulate rack. So we could choose which one we want to go to. Do we want to put this program in slot zero? Do I want to put it in the slot one controller or slot two controller? Being that we only have one controller to pick from, the uh, slot zero zero will be it. So we don't have to click here, we can continue to click at this root level um, right at the top here. And then I'm going to say go on a line. So what's happening is it is making a connection to the emulator and it's basically saying, you know, hey, there's, there's a, you know, what we have here in our, in our Studio 5000 project doesn't match what's in the emulator. Do you want to download? And we're going to say yes. And just ask me again to confirm. And we are now downloading. Of course, there's no program, there's no logic. So, so we are just kind of downloading the configuration to the emulator. There, there's no logic, so it's not gonna execute any kind of programming code yet. That'll be kind of what we'll do in the labs is create some code and then download. But once again, we're just testing out the capability to, commit, to connect and communicate to the Logix Echo. So we see that we are in remote program mode and um, that we are connected. If I come back to my emulator, you'll see there's really nothing happening here, nothing to see, nothing that tells me that we are connected or something that's running here. So again, this just kind of runs in the background and we don't really need to worry about it as long as it's running. So as you do a lab, you'll want to fire up your, your Logix Echo emulator, kind of put that in the background, and then you open up Studio 5000 and you'll do your programming. So that's it. Now at this point, if I want to disconnect from the emulator, I'll just uh, can, can click here in this, uh, this box that says remote program right now. Uh, yours could say remote run or could say uh, something else to the effect. But basically, we can click on this little arrow, and I can choose Go Offline. And when I do that, I am no longer connected to the emulator in Studio 5000. And it, I know that because it says Offline right here. All right, so that's just the major, um, you know, so, so just getting that communications, you know, first getting the Logix Echo installed and the Studio 5000 software installed, and then just making that simple connection is kind of the first um, kind of major breakthrough that you'd want to do. Because once we do that, once you're able to, to uh, get get them running and connected to, together, then the rest of it will be just doing programming exercises.